How should they preach except they be sent? Ask everyone to stand to your feet. feet. Stand to your feet and give my friend, brother, who will bring us the word of God tonight. A big KBC Calumet City welcome and a personality of Pastor Greer of the New Tiberio Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois. Come on, give my hand.
Too often we get some authority confused with all authority. We get working in somebody else's vision confused. And I tell you all the time that, that, that if you just agitated in my vision, if you are agitated in the vineyard that God has given me charge of, then maybe you need to go and talk to God and he'll give you your own vineyard. All right. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Uh, and so we, we got, I want us to understand authority tonight. Authority, 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 authority. What is authority? The word authority and author are close together. Okay. We were sitting in a class one day, Pastor, and the professor came in every day and taught his lesson. And there was a young man there that never brought a book, this young man said that, you know, and then the teacher said to him, young man, you don't, you decided not to participate in class, and the young man got real smart, said, well, teacher, I'm like you, you come to class every day and teach it, you don't bring a book, how are you going to teach a class if you don't bring the book, you don't open the book, you, you act like you're the authority on the subject, and you ain't, you don't even bring a book to class yourself, and the teacher gave him a, 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 a tongue lashing in words that long, and then said, in short, my friend, you're a dumb damn dumb and do not understand, if you're Look at the book I wrote the book. Well, right, right. I am the authority because I am the author. Uh -huh. okay. are, are you with me yet? Yeah. In ancient times when kingdoms and countries were ruled by kings and queens, when one reached the throne, rather by inheritance or overthrow, there were those who were already plotting and planning their death and downfall. Understand that whatever role you are given, you're going to have some haters and some distractors and those who are sitting by the side of the road and wait for you to walk by to shoot a clip under you. Wait for you to walk by. Wait, wait, listen, it doesn't matter what role you're playing. Role of mama. There's some other hater mamas out there who don't like the fact that your child has combed all the time. Don't like the fact that your little girl's face is lotion all the time. They just hate it. They hate the fact that your your baby daddy and how to treat his children. They just hate the fact that God has blessed you in a way that perhaps they have not been blessed. Regardless of what role, whether you are in the role of a mama, whether you're in the role of a daddy, whether you're in the role of a preacher, teacher, musician, singer, somebody is standing by the wayside ready to foil your future and to dim your bright light of excitement. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. These people may be far away, Maybe a far away enemy or a close enough friends, enemies domestic or abroad, and in any case, uh, such as the case of Julius Caesar and Mark Antony and Cassius, the people closest to him decided we need to take him out. My brothers and my sisters, as we talk about authority, I want you to first of all understand that there are those who are ready to take you out. So let's look at a couple of issues there. Uh, or facts that is, as it pertains to authority and spiritual authority in particular. You see, spiritual authority carries with it another whole connotation. When you start talking about spirit, I told you to do this because God told me to tell you. It, it changes, it changes, it changes, it changes things when you go in the room and say, turn that TV off. Turn that TV off. It's another thing when you come to the mama said, turn that TV off. It changes the connotation when I said, sing this song. Or the spirit has laid in my heart for you to sing this. It, it, it carries a different connotation when we talk about spiritual authority. So God, Jesus, Holy Ghost, not surrendering their authority to anybody. God does not surrender his authority. He does not say, you go be me. Right. Uh, Never will you see God surrendering his authority. God ain't going to let you try to be him because one, you are incapable of being God. Oh, look. You, you, you know, I, 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 I 
tell single mamas all the time, quit telling your child that you're the mama and the daddy. You are physically incapable of being anybody's daddy. You are mentally incapable of being, you may be the very best mama you can be. You could be the mama that provides. You could be the mama that bring home the bacon, fry it up in the pan. You could be the mama that put the roof over the head, but you are incapable of being the father and the mama. So, 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 so. God's spiritual authority, you can't be God. I'm leery, Pastor. Some of these preachers who elevate themselves to a position of, of wanting to be like God. Or, you know, that my devil got kicked out of heaven in the first place. Remember? Somebody yeah. go back to Bible school with me. Yeah. Somebody yeah. remember yeah. when yeah. Lucifer decided I can be like God? Yeah. 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 God said, not up in here. <laughs> God never gives up his authority. Now, and whatever role God gives you to play, do not give up the authority of the position God gave you. Oh, God. I don't care what folks say. Do not. I, I am accountable to God. I, oh, Lord. I, I, I am accountable. I cannot surrender what God has given me because you said so. You don't like the way I do it. I, I am accountable. To, I, 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 I was at a snooty occasion, Pastor. Snooty. Snooty. You've been a snooty. When you drink your tea with you. I've got some bougie friends. I do bougie well. I do bougie, but I don't do fake. I do bougie, but I don't do, 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 do fake. So I was at a bougie. Uh, event. Mm -hmm. This one man said, well, I am a lawyer in the Barclay Dixon firm. And the other man said, well, I work for the accounting firm. <laughs> All of them were throwing names. And when they got around to me to ask me, well, what do you do? And who do you work for? <laughs> I stuck my chest out and said, I work for God. And All so... Director and a field representative for God and Son. Plus, I understood my position that it is equal to any other position of leadership. It is equal to any other position of status. I am a field representative for God and Son. I like that. <laughs> Walked in the authority of being a field representative for God and so and I never get it confused that I am God. God covers his position well. He does not allow us to sit in the seat of judgment, nor decision making, for God is sovereign, which means he's in charge all by himself. He ain't got to ask me. Oscar, can I be God today? When we have been assigned by God, anybody got some kind of God? That's your point right there. On our conversation Sunday, that's your point right there. When you have been gifted and assigned mm. by God, mm. nobody <coughs> and nothing ought to be able to move you <coughs> Off of your square. Why? Because when God comes back, He not gonna say to you, "Who did this and who did that?" Where did I stand you? Where did I stand you? When it rained, did anything change? Did the weather change? But did you change? Stand where I told you to stand. I got you. I like that phrase. <laughs> Secondly. God is a spirit, and they that worship him, or they that work for him, or they that represent him, must represent him in a spiritual way. Yes. You, you, you just can't walk around carnally representing spirit. Uh, Let me say that again. You cannot walk carnal 
and say you represent spirit. You, you cannot walk around trying to act like you work for Burger King wearing a McDonald's uniform. Oh, there you go. All right. All right. You got to understand franchise. You got to understand. You understand franchise? Franchise means that if I have bought a Burger King franchise, Everybody got to wear a Burger King uniform. Oh, All the ground beef got to come from Burger King. All the ketchup got to come from Burger King. The shredded onion, the lettuce got to come from Burger King. I cannot infiltrate Burger King with McDonald's french fries. I cannot infiltrate Burger King with White Castle ground beef. It has to be everything signed. Sealed and delivered and sanctioned by BK himself. Because that's the franchise you purchased. And that's why, Pastor, it bothers me sometimes when we call ourselves Christian churches. And we want to mix with all this other. You, you know, a uh, uh, musician, don't you know the difference between a worldly chord and a gospel chord? You, you know, one go one way. <laughs> and the other go the other way. <laughs> Eric, when you playing for them other folk, the beats are a little different, ain't it? Get, 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 because they're better key. This franchise belongs to God. Come on, come on. And I don't care what else you do while you out there uh, 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 consulting and satellite and on your part-time gig, but when you come up in here, everything you do ought to be representative of the Holy Spirit that belongs to God and there ought not be any confusion. If you're liturgical dancing, it ought to look like a dance for God and not a hoochie dance. If you beat the drum, it ought to look like a drum beat for the master, not when you have a Burger King uniform, everything must be Burger King. When we talk about we're Christians and we are a Christian church, we got to make sure that everything we do represents God as a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm not going to use my poetic license and translate that for a moment. Those who work for him must be spiritual. Those who sing and pray and preach must be in spirit and in truth. There's nothing worse than hearing a preacher trying to preach when he prays. Mm -hmm. Nothing worse than hearing a choir trying to sing that ain't praying. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? A friend of mine brought me a CD of a conference. He, he said that uh, the committee wanted a DVD of me because they wanted me to preach at their national convention next year. I said, okay, fine. So he brought me a, a CD <coughs> of one of the preachers from this year's conference. And, and uh, the woman that was singing Beverly, she got up and she said, uh, I am under contract, so you cannot record me. I choose not to be on YouTube. And, you know, she, oh, she just gave this long thing about it. And, 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 and I said, boom, by the third word, they would cut the camera off in there because she wasn't doing that much. <laughs> After like 10 minutes of fluking, she said, I wish I could sing it like I feel it. I said, me too. But <laughs> 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 now you ain't feeling well. You know? <laughs> but when... I have been tired in my body. Yeah, well. When I've been sick in my body and weary in my spirit and tell God, God, I'm going to do your work somewhere between there and here. The Holy Ghost wrap itself around me and stand me up and give me the energy I need. Why? Because I represent God and I am under authority of God that if I'm going to talk to God's people about spiritual stuff I got to be spiritual myself I got to know how oh, yeah, my right said if it don't if you can't shout when you write it the folks show ain't going to shout when you preach it I, it's somewhere in rehearsal the Holy Ghost ought to come somewhere in study for preaching and Bible study the Holy Ghost ought to come and when the Holy Ghost gets on you you can represent the spirit and the Spirit. Oh, I wish I had a witness right there. 
because people are hungry and thirsty. Yeah. So we find this text, Jesus saying to them, I got all this authority in my hand. In other words, I got life and death in my hand. I got healing and deliverance in my hand. You have nothing that you will ever need that I cannot supply. And I, I, I'm so afraid, I'm so afraid. That, that's why we're flunking at Pastor. We are out there. You know, I, I don't do prayer vigils. I, I don't I don't do prayer vigils. I ain't going out and marching with nobody. Well, but you, you got now, and let me let me let me give this disclaimer. Uh, 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 I am a social gospel preacher. I believe that the gospel that I preach on Sunday should translate on Monday. All right, all right, all I believe right. that the God that I talk about on Sunday can open jailhouse doors on Monday. Right. I believe that the God that I talk about on Sunday can heal your disease on right. Monday. Right. I believe the God that I talk about on Come Sunday on. can get in your BD child on Monday and make them act right in school all day. I just believe that the God that I serve will right. work in my everyday yeah. life. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes no sense to go to a prayer vigil with folks that ain't got no prayer life. You out there trying to evoke the power of God. You got hundreds of people that ain't talked to God since last time somebody got shot. Ain't talked to God. Since, are, are you with me yet? But yet we're going to go ahead and evoke the power of God. No, 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 no. If you didn't pray before you got here, don't pray now. If you didn't pray this morning, if prayer is not a regular part of who you are, you cannot have the authority of God. One of the things I found out, let me tell you what I found out. I found out that if you work for a company, every and now with this, you got to communicate with headquarters. Yeah. 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 Check in. Yeah. I, I, I started doing some work with a company called Carrot Bars. And, 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 and every day we have power telephone conferences where everybody get online and talk about how successful they've been and, and we pump each other up and boost each other up and when you hang up that phone you really go out there and get some more customers you really go out there and do some more work but if you have never touched bases with the headquarters if you don't ever check in if you're like, oh no let, let, let me see this I'm, I'm about done I'm, I'm, I'm about done I'm about done Beverly, uh, come on let's see what we can do I, I talked to the hearing aid people today uh, 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 that's, that's a conversation between me and my musician right now let's do this uh, <laughs> <laughs> Talk to hearing aid people today. They're gonna hook us up. Uh, they gonna hook us up. There are three things that must happen when you work for a company. One is you must use the product. Yeah. You cannot work for GM and drive a Hyundai. <laughs> you gotta use the product. You can't work for, you know, you know. If you work in, in uh, uh, Macy's, you can't walk around in Saks or Marshall Fields clothes. <coughs> oh, dear, you have to wear Saks clothes. You can't work for Max Factor and, and, and wear Avon. You, 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 are you with me? You, 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 if you want to work for the company, you got to wear what that company sells. Point one, you got to wear what that company sells. Point two, if you want to work for a company, you got to know the catalog. You got to know the catalog. You, 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 you know, when I walk in a grocery store and see somebody stocking grocery, I said, what aisle are the Greeks in? And he ought to be in the 3B, sir. <laughs> what, what aisle is the cornbread in? Uh, that's in 4F, sir. Uh, he ought to be able to rattle off where he can find whatever it is I ask for. If you work at Fair Play, you ought to know that the ice cream is in the center aisle. You ought to know that the eggs are on the far left aisle. If you work for Fair Play, if you work for uh, 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 Jewel Oscars, you got to know where everything is. And if you work for God and the Holy Spirit, somebody come you to I'm depressed. You need to go to the Bible and read the book of Psalms for the Lord is my life and my salvation. You got to know the catalog. Yeah. One, you got to use the product. 
You can't tell me God is a way maker and ain't got a testimony where he made a way for you. You can't tell me he's a healer and you don't have a testimony where he healed you. You can't tell me he's a burden back. Don't come to me. Well, you know, God is a burden back. How do you know? You got to come back. You ain't got to. You, 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 Pastor Kyle, you do not have to know the eschatological reality. You do not have to understand the homoousia. You do not have to understand the hypostatic union. You do not have to understand the mysterium of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost being three in one. You do not have to understand that there is no fish big enough to swallow a man. But you do have to know I was sinking deep in sin. And love lifted me. You do have to know that when I was a wreck, he saved me. When I was a burden, he lifted my burden. You got to know the catalog. You got to be able to give a testimony. You got to be able to say something to let somebody know you represent this company. <laughs> you got to use the product. You got to know the catalog. You got to check into the home office every now and then. Lastly, in this authority position, you got to be willing to do two things. And this is where many of us fall short. You got to be willing to kill for it, and you got to be willing to die for it. Well, well, well. This kingdom authority, when God gives you a job, because the enemy will come upon you. The enemy will the enemy will attack you. The enemy will come after you in all shapes, sizes. The enemy will come, and you got to be able to lay that demon down. Oh, I wish I had a witness. You got to be able to look that demon in the eye and say, "Demon, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. I lay you down. I stomp you under my feet." You got to be willing to kill for the privilege of authority that. God has given you. You got to be willing to kill it. Sometimes you got to kill your own children. Amen, somebody. Sometimes you got to kill your spouse. Sometimes you got to kill your boyfriend, that girlfriend that, that eased into your life and, and wooed you and loving you and all this kind of good stuff. And you realize that they ain't like God, that don't represent Jesus. They don't care nothing about your prayer life. Don't care nothing about you being saved. Wake up on Sunday morning, bumping around the house, doing everything but trying to go to church with you. Wake up like, oh, I wish I had it. They, they, they wake up on Sunday morning and they want to play Bootsy. They wake up on Sunday morning and want to play two. And all the mother old crazy folk, they want to rap all day, they want to cuss, they want the spirit in the house to be everything but God, knowing you trying to get ready to go to church, but then you need to say, not up in here, demon. Everything in this house, and for me and my home, we will serve the Lord. You will not contaminate my spirit. You will not take me. You got to be willing to kill it. For the authority that's been placed in you. Ask you got to be willing to die for it. Every heel don't have to be Calvary. But every now and then you got to have a Calvary heel. Can I say that again? Every heel doesn't have to, you, you ain't got to die on every heel. You ain't got to go through them spiritual changes every day. Oh, child. You, you got to do all that. But every now and then, there ought to be something in your repertoire of things you need to do in your position where you are willing to die for it. I don't care what you say about me. I'm going on. You can talk about me. I'm going on. You can lie on me. I'm going on. You can do what you want to do, but I made up my mind. I'm on my way to heaven anyhow. I made up my mind come hell or high water. I'm going to heaven. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, what you say. I made up my mind that God has placed some authority in my life. God has placed some authority on my life. That God has given me a position that if I perish, let me perish. I'm going to see the king. It doesn't matter how high the mountain may be. It doesn't matter how low the valley may be. Some cause may rise, but I'm on my way up to heaven in high. I made up my mind. I made up my mind that I'm going on because God has put me in a place of authority. And I'm going to walk in my authority. I'm going to talk in my authority. I'm going to act in my authority. So when the Lord shall come, I'll be ready to say, here I am, Lord. It got dark sometimes, but here I am. It got weary sometimes, but here I am. Don't come down. The enemy came, but 
Richard. Thank you. 